that was said to me, tandoori chicken restaurants in, in the Midlands. Very often when he walked into the boardroom, he would sit in the chairman's chair. And then five minutes later, he'd say, oh, I shouldn't have been here. That's the most difficult question that you'll <laughs> ask this evening. And you've said before that I don't believe in taking right decisions. I take decisions, then I make them right. How did you come to build that philosophy? I'm sorry, I'm going to upset you, but Facebook or Twitter that, that made that statement, that was never made by me. That's not you. <laughs> well, that's awkward. Uh, and so, so it's been a default statement. You, you come to know of it when people read them back to you. Mm -hmm. There's no remedial action that you can take with the social media. <laughs> you live with it. Some people think it's arrogant for you to have state, stated that and you don't have a chance to defend yourself by saying you never did. And some people think it's a great thing to say and you quietly keep quiet. You stepped into the shoes of finest industrialist, JRD. The first day when you sat in that chair, what were your feelings? The feeling was of, of great confusion, actually. One was, what should I be? And, you know, again, metaphorically, you always are told to, that you are having to fit yourself in some your predecessor's shoes. And these were mighty big shoes to, to fit. You know, humorously, I must tell you that that confusion wasn't only in my mind because Jane never left the office. And my greatest concern was, you know, how will I operate with Jay beside me or behind me or whatever. Uh, he sat on all the boards that he had sat on, but now no longer as chairman. <laughs> and very often when he walked into the boardroom, he would sit in the chairman's chair. And then five minutes later, he'd say, oh, I shouldn't have been here. <laughs> and then you'd play musical chairs in the boardroom. In the two years that he was there, he was a wonderful mentor. He never interfered. He supported. Who is one of the most ordinary person and a small uh, activity or that has really inspired you lately? Who in your organization or somebody you met on a road said it doesn't matter, but a really ordinary act that has really inspired you? I would say what has struck me most recently is not a single person, but a group of people, and that is the staff at the Taj during, during the... during the terrorist attack. Because there was no structure, there was... no one was prepared for what there was. I don't think that anybody could have done better than what these people did on their feet, moving moving uh, guests through the kitchen, getting them out and dealing with them and some lost their lives in the process. These were ordinary people, people who had no great um, degrees behind them and they provided leadership, courage and in some cases gave their lives for them. I think the tribute should go to them because they were the ordinary people that did. It's about Jaguar Land Rover and so when you acquired that, when Tata Group acquired, how do you deal with it in terms of culture, especially integrating that into your portfolio? There was a feeling that, that this was a, a ploy for an Indian company to buy Jaguar Land Rover, close down the plants in England, move the factories to India and make Birmingham into a real estate project. I'm saying this not facetiously because it was said to me uh, of tandoori chicken restaurants in, in the Midlands. And I had to stand in front of the workers and assure them that A, Tata's were not in the restaurant business. That we may have some <laughs> hotels, but we didn't have a chain of restaurants and that was not our intention. And then what we said, which is what we tried to do, was to say our plan is to leave you alone to support you and work with you in 
in returning these two brands to their original glory. What's gratifying is that the workforce in JLR did exactly that, and I think they've done admirably well, and the management of JLR, I think, are really the heroes of, of the day. If you can take us back a little bit to that moment when you became chairman, how hard was it for you to create a culture of positive change? My, my first few years in, as chairman was committed and dedicated to changing the culture in, in the company. I inherited a board, for example, that must have been, have an average age of 85. We had a few directors who were participating. Several of them had to be helped into the boardroom because they could no <laughs> longer walk freely. Some of them came and sat down and fell asleep. <laughs> Others didn't hear too well. But when it came to making changes, they all woke up and ensured that no change took place. The first four or five years were spent in trying to figure out how to graciously ease them out of the company. I'm pleased to say that most of them followed a trend of if you made them an offer that was attractive enough, they, they agreed to move. And then Five years later, one could sit down and try to create a new, a new culture, a group that was more customer-oriented. My question is really simple. What excites you the most? That's the most difficult question that you'll ask this evening. How can I say that publicly? 